It's really elevating diversity to a whole new level. That's what I love about it. Well, my name is Chris Salem. I'm an executive coach. I'm a corporate advisor, trainer, a professional speaker, a radio show host, media personality, and an award-winning author. And I work with both individuals and businesses, helping them to create interdependent work environments. Pleasure meeting you. So DLC has been magical in our lives and we managed to bring in uh, different kinds of people from all across the world together. My job as a leader and as a founder of this institution is to make sure that each of these people, their stories are told in the right manner and yeah. we put the intellectual knowledge they have to best of use by entrepreneurs and professionals so that they benefit from it. So what attracts you with DLC as a concept globally and the world's first business platform so this is, this is the first thing we can begin with. What I love about DLC, it's all about diversity. It's bringing together people from around the world. These are entrepreneurs that are open-minded, that are looking to make a difference in the world. It's not just the money in itself. The money is a byproduct of the value that they're creating and whatever they, why they do what they do to help serve others. DLC, what, what it is, it's bringing leaders that really know what is important in life. Everything comes from values. And what I love about DLC is that we're sharing, we're not telling, we're sharing experiences, we're sharing from our values and empowering people to you know, find out from within themselves what that means to him or her. And how can they show up each day to contribute to their community, to their business, to the industry that they serve in and be that example and for others to do the same. We as entrepreneurs and professionals are always very keen and very interested in consuming something that we want to learn about. And, and then we can give any amount of time. And, you know, if I understand what you mean by say by prospereur, uh, now I get into it and I tell you that, you know, uh, Christopher, I believe giving back to society is the first sign of success. My definition of success is all about people who impact other people's lives. Absolutely. And in doing so, if they make money, so be it. It's great. But, but that's not the purpose of life on earth. We leave this world. It's not how much money you made or how many material things that you have. It's the experiences, your own personal experience, but it, it was the, the legacy that you left, the values that you live by, the people that you helped through your example. And that's what you leave on for the next generation to pass on. I'm a firm believer that DLC plays an instrumental role in each of these major metropolitan areas around the world in helping entrepreneurs that, that desire to not just, you know, generate revenue and, and be successful in a monetary way in their business, but truly desire to make a difference, create a legacy, create more entrepreneurs. So that's what I'm inspired to be part of as a transparent, interdependent leader that I live by those values each and every day in my home, my community, in my business, and now that I can be a part of people like Jimmy and the rest of the folks here at DLC, that I can be a part of this group to now create this experience, be part of it, and help inspire other people to step up as leaders, not as followers, to make a difference in their families, their communities, and their business. I would love to know if you had the power to choose within the DLC Leadership Global Committee, what kind of social impact do we wish to cause? And if you were leading the team, how would we measure that social impact? How would we implement that social impact? Because many of times we want to cause a social impact, but uh, our ability to translate it into actionable and measurable goal remains far fetch. So you in leadership, you, you spend a lot of time in, in leadership and you, you train people yeah. from some of the finest organizations across, including the government entities, including universities at, at, at Harvard. It, it's really amazing what you do. If you were given the choice to identify two social impact causes uh, that we can utilize the brain power of our leadership committee and deploy, what would they be? I'm a firm believer with, with growth mindset, core values, people learning to be transparent and vulnerable is the foundation to build anything sustainable in terms of success, whatever that means to you in your family, your personal well-being, your, your community, and in business. That is the, what, the social impact that I 
I part of and I want to be part of with DLC and that we can create an interdependent movement of people to own their own roles and duties in life and business, maximize that and empower others through their example and as a resource to do the same. That creates an interdependent work environment, a family, whatever that may be. That's what the social impact that I'm committed to making happen. What I envision for this is that people can begin to be aware that their thinking is what's holding them back. They may be successful in their business, money-wise, but their, their relationships are, you know, are in ruins. They're not taking care of themselves from a wellness standpoint. There are eight pillars of wellness, social, the relationship with yourself and other people. Most people are codependent, emotional well-being, physical well-being, uh, financial well-being, occupational, intellectual, and environmental. Environmental meaning your, your home, your car, your workplace. Is it cluttered or is it organized? When, when people can understand the power of shifting from the past and the future into the present moment, a growth mindset, operating from your own core values, not somebody else's, because I operated from my father's thinking if I, I didn't even know it consciously, that it would gain his approval. And I was miserable. I was frustrated. I, I, I dealt with 12 years of addiction as a result of it. You spoke of eight pillars of wellness. So I, my mind is already working. What is the first content you're gonna, you're gonna do with you and put it out across on the platform for the world to take benefit of is the eight pillars of wellness. One, yep. for sure. Also, we should definitely cover the concept of prospering. Yes. How, how do you define it? And, and you can perhaps do a workshop and globally people can join the workshop. Absolutely. Subscribe to it. Would love to hear a little bit about your trademark philosophy of prospering. Prospereneur means that when your wellness is in alignment with your wealth, we can experience true prosperity. So wellness being that, that when we can find a, like a harmony, not balance, there's no such thing as balance, but harmony with our wellness, with our social, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, intellectual, occupational, envir environmental, when we can find that harmony with our wellness in a positive way, and then align that with our wealth principles. That's our, of course, our net worth. Why do we do what we do? Are we, are, are we are in, in a profession that truly defines our values and why we do what we do? Our, our freedom, uh, you know, the, those types of things. So wealth isn't just how much money you have, but when we can find that, that alignment, that harmony between wellness and wealth, this is where we can experience true prosperity here on earth. So that's the definition of what prospereur is. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, by the way, to be a prospereur. <laughs> Super Christopher, it has been lovely speaking with you. And I'm really looking forward to personally being in New York and meeting up with you. Absolutely, September will be a perfect time. And we will inform you at least two or three weeks in advance, two things. Uh, one is the Global Leadership Committee meeting. Let's make it 45 minutes of exciting time where next time I tell Chris there's a meeting happening, you are ready with your calendar, you are attending. Because <laughs> if there is so much amount of intellectual juices that flow in that meeting. And it's a very honest in, you know, inculcation of, of all these people, great people together. It would be super. Uh, so that's one. And New York will try and bring people together, at least online rather than waiting till September, so that we get New York going across. Next, we are planning for LA, Washington, DC, Chicago, Houston, and Boston. So by January, we want to put up all these all these six cities, including New York, operational. And that's that's going to be a huge challenge. So U.S. becomes a base and New York becomes a base. I'm Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Such a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, lovely to have you with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Bye, buddy.